It's Classic Country 100.1 WGLC. Steve Pulaski behind the microphone. It is music and stuff and a very special person on the phone line right now. He's a member of one of my all-time favorite groups, period. Not even country groups. One of my all-time favorite groups, period. The most awarded act in country music, deservedly so. He's Mr. Don Reed of the Statler Brothers. Don, how are you today? I'm wonderful, Steve, and it's certainly good to be talking to you this morning. I dearly appreciate it. Where do I catch you today? I'm at my office here in my house, as a matter of fact. I got a, an office here where I write, and that's where I'm sitting looking out the window. Uh, you got a brand new book out, and it is absolutely worth reading. I picked up my copy of it, and I've been diving into it. You got me. It's probably the slowest read I've ever had, just because of the fact that I'll read something about the albums of your career, and then I'll have to stop, and then I got to play the album, then I got to listen to the album, then I got to really. <laughs> dissected. That book, however, it's available wherever books are sold, The Music of the Statler Brothers, an anthology. Don, how did you really muster up, I would say, just the energy? Because this is a it's a thick book, to say the least. You know, Steve, I wasn't sure I was up to it. My sons, we go, my, my two sons and I, Langdon and Dee, we go eat lunch every Wednesday together. It's our day, and we discuss everything imaginable. And they were on me to write this book. And I said, well, what, what do you got in mind? And so they were saying, you know, write about your music, write about this. And I wasn't sure I was up to that. I said, I tell you what, give me a couple of chapters. Let me see if I got anything that to say, because maybe I don't. I don't know. Well, after a couple of chapters, uh, we realized maybe I do have something here. And so I took off and I did. I wrote about every song we ever recorded, about how it was arranged, why we recorded it, when it was written, all that sort of thing. Just a history behind it all. And it turned out to be something that I've been very proud of and very fulfilled by having done it. Deservedly so. You chronicle everything. It is a deep dive. Any Statler Brothers fan should absolutely have this in their collection. And I think any country music fan, too, because there's a lot of, you know, websites dedicated to country music. But when it comes to the history, I love that there is literature on the classic songs and albums. And I think you'd tend to agree. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I love old standard songs. We, we filled our albums with a lot of those classics. And I loved loved them then, and I love going back and listening to them and reading about them now. And, then, you know, I sort of put out a challenge, that I think, towards the end of the book, to other artists in any field to do this with their music. I think it would mean something to them and absolutely mean something to their particular fans. Yeah, and I'm the kind of person, too, when I listen to music, especially country music, I'm the one who looks up the lyrics and I parse it, you know, I try to read yeah. between the lines, and uh-huh. this is something that's, you know, loans itself to that, too. And it's, and it's led me again down a whole new path for you guys like i just listened to last week every time i was getting in my car i was listening to that excellent 10th anniversary album and you know what was really uh, sparked me was i sat down as i wrote i listened to each song in order as i sat here in my office and wrote and i would play the song and then i would write about it and i would play the whole album and i'd go back and i'd write about it so i did everything on a very personal basis i didn't do it from memory plus i kept great records through the years i kept all kinds of notebooks and date books as to what we where we were and what we were doing and all of that was a help but quite a crutch when it came to putting it together i can imagine how long did it take you to write how long was the process oh it was probably a good year and a half that i dedicated to it That's the music of the Statler Brothers, an anthology, again, available wherever books are sold and well worth picking up. There's also, too, a really beautiful dedication to the late, great Harold Reed, your brother, in the beginning of the book, and obviously passed away last year. That was hard news for, I think, me and any other Statler Brothers fan, but you are obviously the closest person to Harold. He was a brother. You called him a partner, a confidant. This is a loaded question, but the impact he had on you had to be pretty immense. The impact he had on my life was just unexplainable. I mean, we were brothers. We were there were six years difference in our ages. He was six years older, but uh, we did everything together. We grew up together. Uh, we were in business together. We sang together. We did comedy. We wrote together songs, comedy, TV shows. But everything we did, we did together. And probably no other person in life that I've ever been that close to. And it was a, it was hard when I lost him. But I knew it was coming, and um, the whole family suffered a great loss. The nation suffered a great loss because he, he was a treasure. And what really satisfied me, Steve, through it all, as I wrote this book, and although he was sick, I sent him each chapter as I wrote it. And he read it, 
and approved everything I was doing. And so I know that he read the whole book before it was ever published, and I know he approved, and that means the world to me. That is awesome that you did that, too, and it gives another degree of personality for that. I have to ask about Harold, though, because I'll tell you right now, the Statler Brothers show is one of the things that got me through quarantine last year. Uh, (laughs) Watching reruns of that on the great RFD network, I've talked about that on the show several times. Did Harold ever think about trying his hand at stand-up comedy? I have to ask. You know, he really didn't because we really didn't do anything separate. We didn't sing as soloists. We, I mean, to go out and do it on our own, we didn't do com- So what he was doing, he was very well satisfied with what he was doing. Oh, we would write comedy routines, but he was such a quick wit that he would just add to it and add to it to where uh, it was it was all his by the time it was over with. Those are treasures. I encourage anybody to look up clips of the Statler Brothers show because, you know, you all bring something, and he ties it together with that, like you said, that quick wit. Yes. And it was like that when he was a kid. He was like that off stage. <laughs> he just had a knack for it. And it was just um, sometimes he would laugh and I would say, I never heard that line before. He said, strange enough, I haven't either. He was hearing things for the first time in his head when he would say it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I absolutely love that. Um, how are Phil and Jimmy? You keep in touch? Doing good. Jimmy, of course, has, has got his career of his own going and just doing great. And I talk to Jimmy all the time, see him all the time. Phil and I, I just saw him at church yesterday morning. So we see each other all the time. We still have uh, our offices here in town. So we're, we're still we're still close and still together. I've heard in the past Phil called the silent Statler because, you know, he always kind of, I don't know if he blended in, but he kind of like, yeah. you didn't really hear as much about him. And I've always loved Phil. That makes me happy to know that he's doing well. You know, that was Phil's personality. Uh, that is his personality, and that was kind of carried over on stage. He was the quiet one, but he was so very musical when it came to put... He was the easy tape that kept us all together, harmony-wise. He knew music. He uh, he was great with it. He knew everybody's part. Anybody had a question, what note am I supposed to be on? Right? He, he would, Phil's the man that would tell you. So he was all, he was that glue. And I always read about you guys online, you know, the history. Obviously, you've done an excellent job of kind of chronicling the history of the Statler Brothers. And i got to be honest, you know, maybe it's just the music industry as a whole. You always hear about, like, the down times or the squabbles and the fights and everything. Yeah. And I know that, you know, surely there had to be lulls. Surely there had to be a couple rough patches. How does a group like the Statler Brothers, you guys specifically, span for five decades and have such a positive run? I cannot find a negative word about you guys. You guys seem like you had the sunniest history on the planet, and I love that. (laughs) Well, you know, we got along well together. We grew up together. We were kids together, and we were teenagers together, so we got along well. Now, there were times we'd say, I think we ought to do this, or somebody'd say, I think we'll do it. But we never fell out about disagreements or, or different opinions. I mean, never a disagreement. But just having just a different opinions, there's nothing really to fall out about. And we realize we're a group, and we're going to do things as a group. And, and as you read, I won't go into it this morning, but as you read in the book, we had a way of choosing what songs we were going to sing by majority votes. And that's how we would go, go through it, that four-star system that we called. That's how we chose all of our decisions, so the majority was always satisfied. I just read a lot about you guys, like, you know, obviously start with Johnny Cash and then do that for eight and a half years and then go on to do your own thing. I mean, even how the Statler Brothers name, even how the band name came to be. Like, it's just all very positive. It would, I mean, there's a lot of bands that get their own biopic, but I'm like, I just don't see if you guys would get a movie. I just don't see where the conflict would be. (laughs) (laughs) I think we had a wonderful, we had a wonderful biopic. Grant, and you mentioned Johnny Cash. Uh, that was he was our beginnings. Without him, there would be no Statlers, and uh, we just we can't say enough of good things about that man. And I have to ask you too: Do you keep up with country music as a whole today? Are there any country acts that you follow? Uh, you know, I don't. My son is involved in Wilson Fairchild. He and Earl's son Will. Uh, I, I follow them, uh, but I really don't. I, I'm not into the day's music. It's a little different from it was when I was there. You know, twenty some years ago. So I I really don't have a good handle on it today. A lot of today's country, I'll be honest, as somebody who's a country radio DJ, and I think, I'm not even going to say you guys were ahead of the curve because it was the landscape at the time you wrote the song, but I think of your song, Nobody Wants to Be Country. Yeah, and and I right. And I love that song because it's a it's something I talk about even on this here program, music and stuff. I talk about genre, I talk about the changing of the genres, and I was just wondering if you had anything to add about, like, just the constant pop infiltration. You know, I, when I wrote that song, Nobody Wants to Be Country, uh, it, it was kind of a fad then that everybody 
has moved away from the country sound. And I, I would like to think maybe it's more of a fad today that they're moving away that they'll come back. I don't know that. Maybe it's gone to where a whole other genre now to where it's it's what it is. But one of these days, somebody's going to cut just a regular old doghouse country record that's just going to knock knock everybody on the, off their feet. And I think we're going to see that, oh, country music is still alive. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm looking for that. I think there's a lot of artists that are definitely doing that. Neo-traditional is kind of the word now in the country uh-huh. landscape. But you do get a lot of pop influences encroaching. And some of these artists, I just think, like, you know, you desperately want to be pop. And I just I just feel as somebody who's been a country fan really since birth, like, you're using this genre as a launch pad for the pop genre because it's easier to break on country. And I like to ask yeah. artists just their thoughts on that. Plus, it's a bigger market. So everybody's sh- shooting for the bigger market instead of shooting for their heart you know so what are you gonna do you guys really wound up staying true to that sound i mean you go back to i think i believe the last charted single you guys had was small small world you know which is mainly harold and jimmy on that song and i'm like that song came out in what 1990 i want to say somewhere around there oh somewhere in the 90s yeah and and i just i just think of it because i'm like this was 1990 it even sounds it doesn't sound like the you know the the sound of the 90s i mean you you had just a couple years later just thinking Tracy Bird and Toby Keith, and I love that. It's like it's it's wholesome, and I, I wind up using that word for your music a lot. Well, I, you know, that's and a lot of people would be uh, turned off by that, or maybe embarrassed by that, but we weren't. We were, it was wholesome, and we enjoyed it, and it was for the family. And we had terrific crowds always because families would come to the show. They would come and bring the kids and the babysitter, and they would all come. And it was uh, it, it was a nice time and a nice uh, a nice feel in the concert. To that point. Um, um, I'm a film critic, and I actually picked up a copy of the Statler Brothers' Farewell Concert a while ago yeah. on DVD to review that and write an excellent, phenomenal final show, first and foremost, Don. Um, thank you. Thank but you that's, very much. that's the thing that I was struck the most about, too, is like looking at the audience. You can even see it on the show, too. You had grandmothers. You had children. You had people, you know, married couples, yep. young and old. It was, you know, anybody from 9 to 95 was there and enjoyed you guys. You're exactly right, and we were blessed with that kind of range and that kind of scope of audience. And uh, I think that's what kept us alive for so many years. And still, I still hear from so many fans constantly. And uh, I know there's websites that are devoted strictly to Statler fanhoods and all that sort of thing. And it, it's just nice to know that it has lived on. Before we end our little discussion here, our little conversation, Don, like I said, I'm giving you the floor. Obviously, you've got the Statler Brothers anthology that's out now. I cannot stress that enough. That is a must own, I think, not only just for diehard Statler fans. I know they probably already got two copies of that, but uh, <laughs> just country music enthusiasts in general. But um, you are no stranger to writing as a fellow Fellow writer, I salute you because you are a great writer and you've written well, thank you. a lot of different books, Heroes and Outlaws of the Bible, Sunday Morning Memories. I'll give you the floor to talk about any of your other uh, works. I'd love to hear about them myself. Well, that's very nice. I mean, th- this was a very personal book, as you can imagine, the anthology was. And I have another very personal book coming out in September 1st, if you want me to tell you about that. I teach, I have taught a Sunday school class at my church, Steve, for probably over 35 years now. And uh, when this pandemic hit last year, of course, churches closed down. and there was a, So I sent out uh, every Saturday night, late Saturday night, I would send out a little, what I call a life lesson to my, people in my Sunday school classes. I just keep this alive until we can all meet again. Well, we still haven't met, so uh, well, I'm still doing it. This thing, has, it sort of caught on, and my, my publisher heard about it, and he wanted it as a book. And that's what's coming out. Uh, the September 1st. It's called Life Lessons. It's just like 90 little chapters about anything that was on my mind and my heart concerning life and morality and living and the Bible or what happened. It's all that together. And it was just kind of a nice, fun thing. A lot of humor, a lot of uh, a lot of inspirational things. And I- I've-, I've had a wonderful time. It got me through the pandemic just being able to write those things. So it's Life Lessons coming out September 1st. I'm definitely going to have to pick up another copy of that. I Hopefully I'll be done by this with the Statler music anthology but again i told you before i told you <laughs> okay. before man i read a ch- i read a, a chapter on an album and then i gotta listen to that album and then i get stuck on the album and having to listen to it so it's i'm so glad you've gotten so deeply into it that makes me feel good no i, I love you guys like i said you, you you guys have been one of my all-time favorite acts since i was a kid so it's a real pleasure being able to talk to you don i 
wish you and the family nothing but great health and positive spirits. And again, the music of the Statler Brothers available now wherever books are sold. And Don Reed coming with some more goodness come September, that book Life Lessons. I'm going to have to make a note of that as well. Steve, you're a good man, and thank you for giving me this forum this morning, and I've enjoyed every minute of you. You're a joy to talk to. Likewise, Don. I dearly appreciate you, man. Have a wonderful day.